And the last person I want to talk about, and I've left her to last because her story is wild. Hello everyone. It's thundering and raining outside, so I think it's time for me to talk about one of my favorite movies, The Big Sleep. Oh, it flashed, but it didn't thunder. Okay, so there we go. I wonder if this will pick it up. All right, so I want to talk about The Big Sleep, which if you've ever, if you've never watched it, go on and watch it then come back to this video. This video I'm going to geek out and talk about, if you've seen in the title, what happened to the ladies of the big sleep. Or, you know, Marlowe's girls. Like, th this film was kind of 007 before 007. Like, you know, every woman that Philip Marlowe met, you know, practically threw themselves and like, in... In, uh, in Carmen's case, literally threw herself at Philip Marlowe, like, you know, and why not? I mean, you know, uh, oh, what's his name? Humphrey Bogart's look, it's an interesting look because, like, it, like, technically he's kind of only average looking, right? But there's just something about him, that je ne sais quoi, as they say, that makes him very, very attractive. So I totally understand all the women on this show. Like, it makes perfect sense that they're all throwing themselves at him. Um, now, so it, I was debating doing a what if. See, there you go. It's gonna sound like a cheap sound effect. Um, I was debating doing a what if because famously, um, the this film didn't um, meet, you know, it got rejected by the censors board, so it had to get cut, had to get cut, and f also, famously, uh, one of the actresses, Martha Vickers, outshone Lauren Bacall, who had just become a big star with To Have and To Have Not, and of course Humphrey Bogart wanted to showcase her, who, you know, she, I think at this time, was she his wife? Anyway, let's, let's go through the women. And let's get into it. And if you like this kind of video, I make them. So subscribe, enjoy. Just anyway, just do your best, darling. Okay, so let's get into it. So let's let's start from the most famous Lauren Bacall. I think everybody knew knows who's listening to this. What happened to beautiful Lauren Bacall? You know, she has had a beautiful, deep, husky voice and this great look and she became a huge star for her entire life so you know after this film you now obviously she went on to do things like um how to marry a millionaire with marilyn monroe and betty grable and then uh i think it's designing women and then uh written on the wind and then of course uh you know, she got nominated for an Oscar for A Mirror Has Two Faces. And I think one of her final roles was in the animation Howl's Moving Castle, where she's just brilliant as um, the, the Witch of the West. So, or the Witch of the Waste, I should say. It's not the Wicked Witch of the West. It's the Witch of the Waste. Okay. So we all know what happened to Lauren Bacall. She's brilliant, she's amazing, she's a legend. Let's look at the other ladies who may not be quite as famous. Let's look at the next most famous one, which is um, Dorothy Malone. Now, when I, I spent years watching this film thinking, oh, that librarian, um, you know, the one that, that, you know, the minx in the, the bookshop, you know, where famously she takes off her glasses and pulls her hair out and suddenly she becomes beautiful and, um, you know, they, you know, basically <laughs> have, have, uh, take the rest of the afternoon off and have, have a bit of fun while, uh, he's on the case. 
and of course she's just as smart and um, I think this is one of those things where Howard Hughes totally casts these women in the way that they would become a star like after this film Dorothy didn't quite it, it took a, a little while for her her career to get going um, she needed to dye her hair blonde and then she starred in a number of Douglas Sirk films and she did some comedies and then of course she exploded with uh, the TV series Peyton Place and she even, uh, one of her last film roles, I think it's her last film role, was in Basic Instinct. So what a career and no one's ever written a book about her. Time to write a book about her. Like I, I, I know maybe she didn't have um, the best life but you know she had a huge amazing career and and she always played this um, sophisticated tart let's say and I loved her for it because she, she did it so so wonderful like yeah the in the bookstore so and funnily a fact as an Australian growing up I just thought that Acme was a company in you know the Warner Brothers cartoons I had no idea that Acme is actually a real company <laughs> but you know let's face it I didn't realize that Lucky Charms were a real thing like I could make a whole video on things that I watched in The Simpsons that I didn't think were real my goodness until I went to America and then I found out what this is real you actually put marshmallow in cereal what? And you have it for breakfast? Anyway, I'm sure I've just made a bunch of American listeners very nostalgic for their childhood. Okay, so let, let's go down to the next one. Martha Vickers. Now, she's a bit of a sad case because this film really should have launched her. Um, you know, she'd just signed with Warner Brothers and they were putting a big push into her and, you know, I mean, you know, obviously she got very well known with The Big Sleep. She could have got even more well known. But um, when I found out what she was supposed to be doing, is basically Basic Instinct before Basic Instinct, if you know what I mean. Um, she, was, she, was, she was like 19 years old, and um, there's a scene where he discovers her and she's, you know, medicated let's say and she's been she's had some racy pictures taken of her and um in the original script in the she had to um simulate a climax and she was a virgin she had no idea what to do and you know howard he, howard hawks had to explain to her what this all was and obviously it got filmed but you know, like Sharon Stone before her, it would have made her a star. But, of course, you know, this is 1946. <laughs> that, that's not going to happen. You know, it's... That, that, that was you know, 50 years away, or, well, 40 years away, let's say. Um, so, and, you know, again, I think... Again, I think... Um, Howard Hughes, oh, sorry, Howard Hawk, I'm going to do this. Howard Hawks really picked on, like, what the formula for her was to be a star. And I think the reason why now, I think the reason why she didn't become as big is because I don't think she wanted to be that type of star. I think the type of star she would have liked to have been is this MGM musical star. Now, Warners did put her in a musical right after The Big Sleep, and it did okay, but then they didn't put quite as much effort into her. She did do a, um, a film, um, one, of, um, one of Jane Mansfield's early films, and uh, called The Burgula, which was made in 55 but released in 57. And if you look at the poster for the Burgula, you'll see Martha Vickers name is on the poster quite large. So obviously she, she's famous enough to be on the poster for this film. But 
again, you know, she didn't quite get the roles and um, she eventually gave up. She married Mickey Rooney, but she married him when he was on, you know, his down, downward trend and he hadn't quite reinvented himself as the kind of lovable side character that he became. Um, so, um, but in any case, I think now, so, because I was going to make a what if about all of these ladies, but I think all of them had very interesting lives. And the thing is, I don't think Martha Vickers would have wanted to be the star that Hollywood was willing to make her to be. I think she, she really wanted like a Judy Garland, a musical, a light musical comedy career. And they weren't prepared to give it to her, unfortunately. Um, so, and then if you look at her epitaph on her gravestone, it reads, Beloved Mother. And I think that says everything you need to know about her. Like, I think, obviously, the way she is represented on the big screen is nothing to do with what she was really like in person. Anyway, but she's immortalised in the big sleep, even if she would rather be known as Beloved Mother. Okay, so next on the docket, uh, let, let's take a look at some people who um, didn't quite become as famous. Um, let's start with Mona Mars, who a very small role towards the end, but I mean, my goodness, she's a beautiful, stunning woman. And um, she, the same year, 46, she appeared in The Big Sleep and also had a part in Humoresque with Joan Crawford and John Garfield. Fantastic film. Um, although I will say the script may not be 100% fantastic, but this is like a star vehicle. And she ended up making 54 projects. So, and, you know, she, she looks like a star, but never became a star, unfortunately. So this kind of, you know, gangster's mole, screen siren. The trouble is she, she's competing against Betty Grable right at this time. And yeah, she, anyway, it was a bit of a, a failure to launch. But um, anyway, she did make it. She made a lot of films. She apparently got a start in daytime radio dramas on CBS. So, you know, she, she had a journeyman's career. It's nothing to be ashamed of. My goodness, 54 roles. Not everyone does that. Um, okay, so next let's talk about the taxi driver. This is going to be really short, I'm sorry. Um, she was played by Joy Barlow, and I looked her up. There's no information about her. So all we have is that she made... A couple of uncredited uh, roles for Warners. Um, this was her in the A picture, the other ones are all B pictures, and then we don't hear anything from her. And if you don't remember the taxi driver, she's kind of a girl Friday where um, Marlo takes a taxi and she, you know, she makes a play for him. And it's really, it's a fun scene and I honestly think that Joy Barlow would have been a great Girl Friday kind of a character. Like, um, so I, I would have put her with like a, a male star and she could have been like a second tier star and, you know, could have had that, like a Rosalind Russell kind of career. Like, beautiful, funny girl and my goodness, we missed out. We missed out. Joy Barlow, but you've been immortalised in the big sleep and you're fantastic in your brief scene. You, you totally steal that scene. Um, there are a couple of waitresses. I'm sorry to say I don't remember them. So, uh, but one of them, uh, Tannis Chandler, she actually did the 27 pictures. Honestly, they're all uncredited. Now, uncredited at the time didn't mean what it does now. 
because um, it sounds like it's just a background character. This could have been a background character, but at, you know, a lot of characters, even with lines, didn't get credited because you have that very truncated um, screen credits right at the beginning of the film, as opposed to like where just about everyone is credited right at the end of the film these days. Okay, um, I might be getting to the last one. And the last person I want to talk about, and I've left her to last because her story is wild. I want to talk now about Sonia Darren, or as she was born, Sonia Palkowitz. Um, now she plays the role of Agnes, who was um, kind of the girlfriend, or like she she played she played the um, the secretary or the, the shop assistant of the kind of first edition, the fake first edition books across the road from the, uh, the Acme bookstore. Um, now, uh, her scenes with Humphrey Bogart are all incredible. And um, uh, the, the reason why I'm leaving her to last is because her story is a bit wild um but uh i I just want to say like how much i I really loved her in this role and i was quite saddened to find out that she she actually gave up acting and went into modeling in new york uh with the elite model agency so what what if she'd stayed as an actress i I think this is the kind of role like as for a lot of these uh, actresses I think this is the kind of role that she would have really excelled at as this sort of snarky secretary. Like, uh, um, I, I could see her in the apartment as that... So it's a very small role, but there is a snarky secretary in that. Um, Lily Tomlin really make, made a career out of the snarky secretary. Um, and I think she could have been that snarky secretary for the 40s and the 50s. And, I mean, the apartment is in the 60s, so I I think she could have been really great, but unfortunately, um, I guess she didn't think all that much of Hollywood. And so what happened to her? She, uh, so I think, as I mentioned, she went back to New York, became a model, and, um, well, her parents are, uh, she, she comes from medical doctors, her brother was a doctor, and she married a doctor and they had a son let me look him up i want to get his name correct um so they had a they had a son named uh, mason reese now as an australian i don't know who that is but apparently he was featured in commercials in the 1970s He's the youngest of her four children, and um, he was even featured, he even had a reality show, I think, or a movie about, about him, about his his sort of a semi <laughs> semi documentary about his his life. Um, and uh, I'll put his face in here. He's got quite a quite a funny face, and uh, you know. I guess if I ever get to make a movie in Hollywood, I'd love to hire him. I mean, he's got such a such a great face. I mean, you know, in the, in this day and age where everyone gets the same plastic surgery and they all look the same, you know, it'd be it, my goodness, he has a great face. I, you know, anyway, okay. So the wild part is not that she had a son who became a child star. Um, so her brother became a doctor as I mentioned he was also a surfer and he and his wife um, basically packed up shop you know did did you know before before the hippies got in a combi van in the, the 50s I think it was and they just lived life their lives as nomads they had six kids um, and they just they went from town to town surfing, surfing, and they just, they surfed. I guess somehow they made money through, maybe he was doing, see, I'm guessing here. So 
But there is a documentary, you know, this is where Sonia Darren comes in again. There is a documentary called Surfwise. I, I do want to track this down and watch it. Um, comment in the link below if, if you've watched it or if you want me to watch it. Um, I do live in the, the city near a main road, so there is stuff like that happening. Sorry about that. Um, so... So in, in Surfwise, you, you can see, like, they even wrote a... Uh, sorry, so, so in Surfwise, you can see they just... They live their lives as surfing nomads. Um, and uh, they even... Uh, so the, he even wrote a book about, um, you know, being uh, a, a doctor or a surfer on, on the road, which I'll hopefully link here. And... Um, that they look very happy, him and his wife, so kudos to them. Um, so, well, I, I just want to say that, I mean, aside from the one that we know nothing about, but, you know, I did hear once um, the, the young girl who played uh, Matilda um, in the Roald Dahl movie adaption, um, she wrote an article for Cracked.com and she said that the less you hear about a child star, the, the more likely they are having a happy life. So the, the f or like I guess a former star. So I guess the fact that we, we really don't know nothing, no, don't know nothing, and I'm an English teacher, we don't know anything about the, the lady who was the taxi driver. She probably had a great life, and as all these women did, you know, whether they became huge superstars and had long careers or not, um, you know, like being a beloved mother, um, you know, be ha just having a wonderful life. So, you know, that's I guess is the opposite to my what if. Like I, I, you know, I think it's great that they all had really wonderful lives and. They all contributed to a film that is going to be with us for a long time. And if you haven't watched it, why are you watching this? <laughs> if you haven't watched it, go out and see it. It's all the women in this are wonderful. I mean, all the actors are, but anyway, I, I just wanted to focus on, um, you know, like like a pseudo Bond girl, Marlowe's girls, and. Uh, and, and say what what happened to them, where are they, where, well, I mean, they're all dead now, but where were they now? Um, so, thanks for watching. Um, if you enjoy this video, I have many more just like it. Um, please like, comment, even if you hate it, and subscribe. <laughs>